I'm Les. I'm the Adult Programming Librarian at Jessamyn County Public Library. Today we're going to do one of my favorite things. We're going to turn old clothing or bits of fabric into crazy creatures. I've been doing this for about 20 or 30 years and a lot of these creatures live around my house. I'll show a few of my friends to you here today. This is Bolero Cat. He's made out of velvet that was on my wedding dress. It's kind of faded now. but Here are a pair of very pot-bellied rabbits that I made out of my daughter's old overalls. Here's a tiny felt frog. He was all hand-sewn. We've also had some fun programs at the library including making sock monkeys. I know 14 or 15 of my friends got some for Christmas. Here's a picture of some of those monkeys that were rehomed. So to begin our project, all you need to do is find some clothes that you think will look good as a creature. Here are some of my selections today. I found this ripped up t-shirt. Uh, a shirt that's clearly been scavenged for parts already. Has some good buttons left though. A pair of jean shorts. The leg to a pair of red corduroys. And a sock that no longer has a partner. So these are going to be the things that I'm going to turn into a creature today. When you're searching for clothing or fabric to make your creature, consider whether you're hand stitching or machine sewing. If you're going to hand stitch, then things that don't unravel and are pretty durable are your best options. Once you've gathered all the materials you're going to use to make your creature, decide whether or not you're going to make something familiar like a cat or a dog or a bunny, or whether you're just going to make a crazy cobbled together monster. I'm going to go with crazy cobbled together monster today. I drew this exciting picture of the one I hope to create. If you're making a pattern, just draw out the general shapes of each part of the animal. If it's just little triangles for cat ears, that will work fine. We're not going to be exact. If you're the kind of person that needs exact step-by-step -step instructions, we've got you covered there too. We just got a fantastic new database full of online craft projects called Creative Bug. On Creative Bug, you can find the work of an artist called Katya Ferris. She has an, a tutorial to walk you through making her kind of dolls, which are called Lucky Juju dolls. And I think she does an owl and a cat and a dog. Also, we've got some great books around the library. Uh, two of my favorites are Plushorama, Curious Creatures for Immature Adults, and Stupid Sock Creatures great things to check out. Don't be intimidated by the idea of making a pattern. Really all you're doing is drawing out some shapes that look like they would work for the different parts of the body and cutting two pieces of each. So it's pretty simple. Things to consider are the smaller the piece the more likely you are to want to hand sew it. The stretchier the fabric the easier it is to turn inside out. So if you have a very small opening or a very small piece it's best to do that with stretchy fabric. Also, points inside triangles and squares uh, don't always come out super pointy. The way to um, help them come out pointy is to trim the fabric away from the edge on the inside before you turn it right side out. It's not super necessary. We're not trying to make something perfect. We're trying to make something fun. So just roll with whatever comes out. You can see that I've taken the fabric and cut it into the basic shapes that appeared in my drawing. If one of your materials happens to be a sock, you're in luck. Socks lend themselves well to making hands and feet and legs and arms and even bodies and heads, thus the famous sock monkeys. Let me show you how to cut it up really quickly so that you can use these parts. You 
cut your sock into two pieces like this. These two pieces could be arms or legs. We'll just sew a seam right down the side right here. Either the heel or the toe can become the mouth or the face or a nose. So cut off the toe, the heel, and it looks like this. You cut off the toe, and it looks like this. And we're left with yet another square, which would make a great body. Now let's get ready to sew them together. You're going to turn all your pieces so that they're face to face. You're going to make a seam around three sides of each piece. And I think that you can judge from where the piece will be attached. What is the best seam to leave open to turn the piece right side out when you're done sewing. With these legs, I'll just sew one stitch up the side and leave the opening at the bottom for the foot and the opening at the top for the body. With these ears, I'm going to sew all the way around the triangle and leave the opening where the ear attaches to the head. With the body, I'm going to sew it into a sort of pill shape with an opening at the top where the head will attach. The feet I'm going to sew as a little triangle with the opening on the straight edge. My pieces for the head I'm actually going to hand sew and I'm going to show you how to make a gather stitch and we're going to gather this into a little ball. So this will save for later. I'm also going to save the nose and the mouth piece for later. sewing a default seam allowance is about a quarter of an inch around the outside. This gives you plenty of space so that the fabric won't fray. Got an ear. He's got two legs. And here's his body. So now we've sewn all of our pieces together and turned them right side out. So I have two ears two legs, two feet, and you'll notice I changed my feet fabric from jean material to t-shirt material. This is because these parts were very small and when I sewed them with jean fabric they would not turn inside out easily, so I made it easier on myself. Two tiny hands, two arms, the body, our mouthpiece that we are going to hand sew on. So if we want his head to have a little more volume, if we just sewed these two pieces of fabric together, it would be kind of a pancake shape with a little volume up front and a little volume in the back. But we want it to be more round, or at least I think I want it to be more round. 
This is t-shirt fabric. I've doubled it because when you put stuffing in it, t-shirt fabric can kind of, you can see through it a little bit. And we don't want to see the stuffing inside. We want it to have a nice dark purple color. To do a gather stitch, we're just going to take our needle, make sure it's got a knot on the end, pull it through, and just around the edges, we're going to you see what I'm doing? I'm pushing big blumps of fabric on and just pulling it through. So poke your needle in right along the edge like this. Pull it through. So what you end up with is just a really big stitch right along the edge. I've used white so you can see more clearly. And when you pull it, it pulls all the fabric together. So stick it in, just push big chunks of fabric on there. All the way around. So now we can pull it together in a ball. And if you were to stretch it out, you would see that big stitch around the end. So that's a gather stitch. Here's my creature stuffed with all his parts ready to be sewn together. So you can see I've been stitching my stuffed pieces together. The stitch that I use is a simple whip stitch. So I knot my thread, I push the ends of the pieces into themselves, sort of tuck them in so that you're sewing along a folded edge and that frayed part won't stick out. I kind of stick it on where I want it to go. I run my needle up under and inside that folded edge. Oops. And, and tuck the, the string down inside so you don't see it. And then I just whip stitch it on. Whip stitch is just like this. If you don't know how to whip stitch, you can do a really quick Google search and you'll find a video that'll give you a nice close up of what I'm doing. And I try to pull my stitches pretty tight and make them small. You can see I've done this for most of the parts already. I'm going to finish this up and then come back and show you how to do embellishments. When you're sewing, one of the keys to having a really nicely finished piece is not to have loose ends sticking out anywhere. So when you knot off, you want to get ready to make a regular stitch and have a loop of thread sticking up. Put your needle back through that loop of thread and pull to make the knot. Do it twice. Then take your needle, stick it anywhere back up through your piece so that that thread is buried inside and then cut it off. Now, if you'd like to add some hair to your piece, that's an easy thing to do. Get a piece of cardboard and some yarn, wrap it around, clip it off, 
Then take another piece of string, slip it under the group that you just made or the ball you just made, and tie it. Knot it off good, tie it really tight. And then cut it, and voila, you got hair. Not sure if my guy needs hair or not. Hmm, maybe. Maybe he needs a little bunch of hair. Yeah, maybe like this. I've chosen some buttons for his eyes, but you could embroider them. You could paint them. I'm putting a little button inside a big button so he has a... Uh... Oh. When you're embroidering to keep the knot and the extra string from showing, take your needle with the knotted end and pull gently until the knot pulls into the fabric. Well, then you can clip the rest of that string off and now when you embroider the knot and the end of your string won't show. For a mouth I generally like to do a chain stitch goes like this. You stick the needle back down inside the stitch you just did and come out a little bit to the other end of it. Of course there are many online tutorials about how to do different embroidery stitches. And so she's done! I hope that you create some fun creatures yourself. Now all I have to do is figure out what her name is. Hmm. We'll see you next time.